Welcome to Intro to AI, Measuring Similarity Using Euclidean Distance. I'm going to explain what that means a little bit later. So basically what we're looking at today is we're trying to measure the similarity between two things. Okay, and what I'm not talking here about two objects like, you know, length, width, and height, even though I have a ruler on the screen. What I'm talking about is the similarity between, for example, people. If we were trying to determine are two people compatible or who is one person most compatible with in a group, how would we measure that? And we're going to do that by measuring distance. I'm going to show you what that means. But taking a look at what's on the screen now, you see that there is a an arrow at 10 centimeters. There is an arrow at 20 centimeters. There's inches up above for my uh, fellow Americans. And you can see just, you know, just by thinking about this, you can see the distance between those is 10 centimeters. Okay, so it stands to reason that if something were, you know, at 15, it would be closer than something at 20 is to 10. So we're just, we're just basically measuring distance. Okay, so we're going to see how this works in AI and machine learning. This is kind of a precursor uh, to clustering, which, which hopefully I'll get to someday. So let's take a look at some code and what we're going to do here with this particular problem. Uh, so let me make that text a little bit bigger for you, just in case. I'm not sure how big your screens are. So you'll see here, uh, we're trying to determine the compatibility between people. So you see here, we've got three questions. Um, now, we could have 100 questions. We could have 1,000 questions. It doesn't really matter. Uh, but whatever number of things that we're measuring, we need to measure them in a consistent way first. So I went on the internet. I Googled, like most people do. And I found this thing on Quora. I'll put the link down below. It's, it's here as well. The three questions, the three things that most highly correlate with compatibility are the ones you see here on the screen. One is, I like horror movies. Two, I want to go travel abroad on my own. And three, I want to go live on a sailboat. I'm going to throw it all away and live on a sailboat. So what I've done here is I've added what's called a Likert scale. So scale of one to five. So one is strongly disagree. Two is disagree. Uh, three would be neutral. Four would be agree. And five would be strongly agree. So let's talk about distance here. Okay, so what I've done is I've created three people, uh, person A, person B, and person C. And I'm only looking right now at I like horror movies. So you can see here person A strongly agrees, person B strongly agrees, person C strongly disagrees. So just, just by looking at this, just common sense tells you that at least in this aspect, person A and person B are far more similar, they're far more compatible. But how do we do this mathematically? Okay, so what we can do is measure the distance. So for example, person A to person B. So we'll call this distance, I'll call it AB, equals person A, and it's the zero index of the list, and person B, zero and then we'll do distance uh, from a to c equals person a zero minus person c zero so if we print those out we'll say distance a b and we'll print and yes i know that's very easy to calculate in your head uh we'll, we'll get to that in a second we're gonna we're gonna add a few more uh, features so our attributes so I'm gonna go ahead and compile it not compile I'm gonna run it um, I've been teaching a lot of Java lately so I'm thinking compilation so you can see here the distance the mathematical distance obviously between 5 and 5 is 0 okay and the mathematical distance between 5 and 1 is of course 4 so if we're looking at this we can see that the lower number zero indicates a closer compatibility at least in that particular area okay now i want to do something here real quick i want to reverse these just to kind of show you something so person b minus person a oops person a zero okay and let me 
go ahead and just copy that. Copy and, and I want to show you what happens when we do this. And you know, if you think about the math, it's pretty straightforward. Oops. Okay, so let's go ahead and run that. Now, if we run in this again, okay, you can see here we get negative four. Okay, so which is not what we want because negative four is less than zero. Okay, so yeah, not not what we're looking for here. So what we're going to actually do, okay, is we're actually going to watch what I do here. We're going to end up squaring this. And I'll come back to y in, in a few minutes. So we're going to square that, and then we want to take the square root of that as well. And you'll see why in a minute. So uh, I think we can do math.sqrt, and I'll have to import math here in a second, uh, math.sqrt, and let's go ahead and import that real quick. Uh, import math. Okay, so let's go ahead and test that, make sure we get the 0 and 4. Now notice how it turned into a float, 0, 0.0 and 4.0, which is actually more what we want anyway. Um, so in this case, you can see that this gives us basically the same answer we got before. Okay. So that's with a single attribute, which, which makes it pretty simple. So let's go ahead and add our second attribute, So which is I want to travel abroad on my own. So let's say, you know, person A is really adventurous and really wants to go ahead and do that. Person B is yeah, not so sure that's really the way they want to go. And person C is really adventurous and wants to do that. Okay. So now, now it's getting a little more complicated. And instead of kind of calculating everything, how can I put it like, manually, we're going to have to calculate it, we're going to make a function to do this. But what we want to do now is to take this distance, okay, add it to this distance, I'm sorry, take this distance, square it, add it to this distance, square it, and then take the square root of that. And the same thing, we're going to take the distance here, square it, we're going to take the distance here, square it, and take the square root. So if you think about that, that basically comes out to the square root. Uh, so let's see, math.sqrt. Basically, it's a, so it's basically a minus b squared. I'm not sure how to write that, squared, plus uh, b, I guess it was a b minus it would end up being b minus c, even though we don't have a c here. This is basically the same as you would do with the Pythagorean theorem. This is why we call this uh, Euclidean distance. Okay, so it's basically a squared plus b squared, which is the distance here. The distance here is this is a, this is b. So a squared plus b squared, we take the square root. Okay, so that would give us, if we actually, what do we say, if we plotted this out on a two-dimensional Cartesian plane we would actually get the distance uh, in 2D space. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a method um, to do this. So def, de, we're gonna define a method, we'll call it distance. And we're gonna do person, we'll do P1 and P2, so a person, okay? So what we need to do is we need to iterate. So for I in range, length of p1. Now this assumes that the length of p1 and the length of p2 are the same. Okay, So we'll call this sum, uh, say uh, total, because <laughs> sum is protected, total plus equals okay, p1i minus p2i so just leave it like that. So this is gonna this is the same as person one. So this minus this. Now remember it's squared. So we need to square that. It's the difference in the distances squared. And we're gonna add up that total. 
and then we are going to return the square root of the total. So we're going to try this. So we're going to say distance uh, person A, person B. And distance, uh, let's say B, I'm oh, sorry, AC equals distance person A, person C. That persona. Okay, so let's go ahead and run it, see what happens. Got an error total. Okay, so we're gonna do total equals zero. We gotta, my bad, we gotta set total to zero first. Okay, so this gives us a distance okay, of three and four. Okay. So this minus this squared, so this minus this is zero, so that's zero. So zero squared is zero. Five minus two is three. Three squared is nine. Square root of nine is three. Okay. So five minus one is four. Four squared is 16. Two minus five is three. Three squared is nine. So 16 plus nine is, what's that? 16, did I count that right? Five, three. Let's see, did I do that correctly? That should be 16. Why is that not correct? Total plus equals. Person one, person two, that's square root total. All right, my calculating the, oh, duh. It's person A minus person C, got, got it, duh. Okay, so five minus one is four. That's squared, five minus five is zero. So this gives us four squared. Okay, so my bad there. Um, so let's, actually, let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and do distance, uh, was that, was that BC? Uh, distance BC equals distance person B and person C. Okay, so we'll print that out. Print. Let's go ahead and run that. Okay, so you can see still A and B are the most compatible. Okay. So A and B are pretty similar. They have a 5 and a 5 and a 5 and a 2. They got a 5 and a 1 and a 5 and a 5. So that kind of makes sense. Then here we got, you know, a 4 distance. We got a, a 3 distance. Kind of makes sense that A and uh, B are still the most compatible. So let's go ahead and add in, I want to live on a sailboat. So let's say we got a one here, we got a five here, and we got a, well, let's try, try a four here, see what happens. So let's go ahead and run this. Now notice I've just added an attribute, but because I'm using the length here, it doesn't matter. So I can add as many attributes as I want, as long as they're lined up, okay? And that the scales kind of match up. So let's go ahead and run that. Okay, well look at that. <laughs> okay, so we can see we kind of got a tie. Um, maybe those weren't the best numbers to have chosen. Let's go ahead and make this a two and just kind of see if we can get a little bit of, of difference here. Okay, there we go. Okay, so we still see that by a slight margin that A and B are the most compatible. Uh, let's go ahead and put this down to a three. Let's see if we can get some better numbers here. Okay, now now we see a little bit. Um, now we see that A and C are the most compatible because their distance is 2.8. And then here we've got 4.6 and we've got 5.0. Okay. So looking at this, again, it's not obvious here which one is quite, you know, which one is more compatible um, because the numbers are pretty, you know, all out there. Um, now just something to check just to see if your algorithm is working correctly is you know I would do one of them oops, that should be a one since we're not using that one and one 
So if we run this, we should see a zero distance here, uh, and the same distance between A and C, and the same distance between B and C. I think that's probably four, or maybe not. Um, oh, 6.9, okay, that's, who knew? Um, so you can kind of see, yeah, this is the same. This is different, because it's, uh, it's 16 plus 16 plus 16, square root of that. And then same thing here, 16 plus 16 plus 16, square root of that. So is that right? Yeah, 16 to 48, yeah, that, that sounds about right. Okay, we're, we're pretty close on that one. Um, so this is a way to measure compatibility. Okay, so we can measure it that way. Let me go ahead and just put some, put those back to where they were. It's a little bit more interesting, I think, with quite varied uh, numbers. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna assume that these people are my choices, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and put them into a list. Okay, so find the most compatible. Most compatible. So I'm gonna make a list of people. Okay, so we've got person A, person B, person C. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do, I'm gonna make a person called me. Okay, and I'm gonna put in my information. So I like horror movies, no. I do not like horror movies at all. Um, I want to travel abroad on my own. Yeah, I'm going to put that. I'm going to make that a four. And then I want to go live on a sailboat. Oh, God, yes. I'm going to make that a five. So now what I want to do is I want to find the lowest compatibility. Okay. So, or I should say the highest compatibility, which means the less lowest distance. So I'm going to find, I'm going to say, lo, uh, say closest. It's me. It's easiest that way. Closest equals 0, 0.0. Actually, no. Closest equals. Uh, what I got to do is I'm going to do distance, person A, and me. So I'm going to assume that person A is the closest, because okay, it's possible. I'm going to do this following for person in people. I'm going to iterate through the list. Okay, distance, sorry, sorry D, I'll say D, uh, equals distance, uh, person, and me. And then if D is less than closest, so we'll say the closest, closest equals D. And at the end, oops, closest, when it's done, we'll say print uh, the closest. Uh, I say the first person uh, is. This is actually just going to give us the the number. We'll deal with that later, I guess, if we have time. Is closest. Let's run that and see what happens. Okay. All right. So the closest person has a compatibility of 1.41, which is pretty good. Um, so let's go ahead and do the following. We'll say names equals uh, a, say, say, again, we would normally do this with objects and things, but person B and person C. And then, so closest equals D. What we gotta do is keep track of the index. So closest i equals uh, zero. So we're gonna just assume it's the first person in the list. So I should probably make this uh, people zero, people zero. Again, this is just list, you know, if you're not familiar with list, this is probably not the video for you. Um, so we'll say closest I equals, oh, can't do that because it says person and people. So for <laughs> I in range, and this is uh, kind of the process, uh, length of people. And I apologize, this is getting a little, getting a little out there. Um, yeah, so person equals people I, there we go, and I'll fix that. Okay, let's try this again. Is is uh, 
let's see, names, closest. I should have used objects here, but live and learn. And all right, let's see if this works. Okay, so according to my calculations, the closest person is person C with a compatibility ratio or whatever you want to call this, compatibility distance of 1.41, which you can see is much closer than those guys were to each other uh, earlier. So let's see why that is. So I have 145. This person has 154. So you can kind of intuitively see that you know we are much much closer in compatibility than we are than I am with these particular people. Okay, so that's kind of how it's done. Um, I know it's a little bit quick, and I you know maybe the if you're again if you're not up on your lists and iteration it might be a little bit of a challenge to follow what I did there. But let me walk you through it real quick. Um, but the idea here is how do we measure Euclidean distance over a range of attributes? Okay. Uh, now again, there's a couple assumptions here. Uh, in this case, you know, all the attributes have kind of similar, how do you put it, kind of similar numbers um, and that they're equally weighted. So the weight of this is the same as the weight of this is the same as the weight of that. We're ignoring weights. Uh, and then we assign a numerical value to each of these. And it's a numerical value that you know, kind of makes sense, I think. Um, so we created three people and we gave them certain attributes. We're just using lists here, nothing, nothing fancy. We measured the Euclidean distance. I probably should have called this Euclidean distance, but that's okay. So what we did was we took the sum of the squares of the, of the differences. So this minus this squared plus this minus this squared plus this minus this squared. That whole thing square rooted. Okay, and that gives us the Euclidean distance. And again, if this was 3D space, if these were points in 3D space, it would give us the distance between those points in 3D space. So this is actually why it, this is why it's called Euclidean distance, because it comes from 2D Euclidean planes, which extends to 3D, and which can extend to any number of attributes. Um, and then here we just kind of measured the distance manually. Okay, but I'm going to comment that out. And we just calculated it just to test it. And then what we did here was we made three people, person A, person B, and person C. They have the same index, okay, so 0, 1, and 2. I answered the questions for myself, and these are, these are accurate questions. This is, these are my real answers. And so what we did was we're trying to find the closest person. So what we do is we start out, we say, okay, well, it could be person A. Okay, so let's get that distance. And we're trying to find the closest person in index, and that's gonna be zero. And then what we do is we iterate through each of these. And then we calculate for each person the distance between that person and me. And if that distance is lower than what I already have, then we say the closest is D, and then the closest index is i to keep track of the index. Again, we should have done this with, I should have done this with an object, but we'll live and learn. And then once we've iterated through all the possibilities, we print out the result. And this is a common pattern. And again, so if we run it, we get the per closest person is person C. And again, we looked at the numbers. You know, 145 is clearly much closer to 154 than it is to 525 and 352. So intuitively, it makes sense. Now again, we could add as many attributes as we wanted as long as there were you know, comparable attributes for each particular person. Um, and then this gives us, like I said, the most compatible person based on these questions and these answers. So this is how we could find a potential match or something that is similar. And what's interesting is once you learn this, you can use this kind of same concept to look at images and how similar are images. Does image A, is image A equal to, or is image A similar to image B? Is image B similar to image C? This, this concept is extensible. Um, and also it's something that you would probably, again, if you're gonna use, start to do clustering, uh, one of the ways we can do is we can measure, again, this Euclidean distance 
and then use some techniques, for example, k-means, to find clusters and to group uh, by similarity. Now again, there are libraries that do this as well. Uh, I'm trying to show you here at the very raw basic level, hopefully in a way that my high school students can understand uh, how we can do these things with just a little bit of math and a little bit of iteration. Okay, so anyway, that was that. Uh, oops, thank you for watching, and as I like to say, keep on coding.